hey what's up guys and i'm back with something new for you guys to enjoy this nuta is going to be rather special what if nuta had telekinesis telepathy teleportation and time manipulation i was told a long time ago about a show named the tomorrow people and i just got around to watching it and i had to say even though it was only one season it was truly awesome each members that are a part of this special group possess a rather unique set of abilities except for one a young man that possess a fort ability which is time manipulation and i'm gonna be based in ruta off of that with those abilities so yeah sit back relax and i hope you guys enjoy and don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs of the other channels and i hope you guys enjoy each and every one of them I already post a brand new episode of What If Naruto Was Neglected with Chaos Magic so go ahead and enjoy that over an anime symbol. So without further ado you are wasting more time. Let's begin now guys. We begin this brand new series in the village known as Kanoha as a young boy possessing spiky blonde hair, blue eyes, wearing a grey t-shirt and black shorts and sandals was making his way and he wasn't alone. Well there was no physical other person there, it was a voice that was in his head. Alright, go left. He turned to the left as he was in a massive foliage of trees. Now go straight ahead and when you see the intersection turn right. The young boy did as he was told as he made his way. When he came across a rather large creek. Now stay there and look up. Upon the voice saying that as he gazed outwards he saw a massive explosion. Fireworks in the sky. The boy had a big bright smile on his face. Happy birthday Naruto. The voice said in a rather cheerful tone. As a boy known as Naruto smiled to himself. He just turned 10 years old. His name was Naruto Uzumaki. It started when he was 6 years old. At first everything was so normal. Everything was alright. Until he started to hear voices. At first he thought he was going crazy. He thought he was losing his mind. As he didn't understand. Upon walking by the people on the street. They called him monster. An abomination. They were wishing and praying for his death. At first he never knew that it was them. The more voices he heard the more. It broke his spirit that. The people wanted him dead. Well he didn't know at first but the voices were becoming a problem he thought he was going mad that something was physically and mentally wrong with him however he wanted to go to the academy because it was always his dream to be a ninja and he feared that if he told someone they would prevent him from doing so so he kept it to himself as he grew he realized that the voices were coming from the people around him and it physically scarred his mind and soul to hear what they actually think about him. They call him monster, demon, an abomination. And they were hoping that he just keel over and die. Before that he was a cheery young man who was always smiling but he stopped. He just wanted it all to go away. That was until one day he heard a voice. And this voice, it spoke to him in a different way. She called out to him. And she told him that he wasn't alone. As she told him that she was only here to help. At first he did not trust her but as the time went on she did nothing but 
encourage him to do things that would help him. As he started the academy, she even helped him with his homework. She was always there. She told him that her name was Lucy. He never saw her before, but he always hear her voice. It's been three years now, and she's been there for him ever since. Making sure that he was always safe, checking upon him when he was lonely, wishing him happy birthday. He didn't know why he could do this. However, she told him to focus, to block the others out, and she was right. He was able to block them all out. He was able to push away all the other voice and only focus on hers. And it was a wonderful moment for him, no longer having to be bothered by the other cursed voices. He was so happy, so, so happy, because he had stopped caring about anyone in this village except for only two a long time ago. The only people that he actually cared about was Ayam and Tuki. Those two people were the wonderful owners of the Ichiraku restaurant over the years. Especially after finding out the truth, he's grown disgusted and hateful of these people. The one that he hated the most was hers and Sartobi. The Hokage of this village. Three years. That was how long it took for him to get a grasp on how to control his telepathy. That was the name that Lucy told him of his technique. And when he went to the Hokage and questioned him about his parents, the man seemed visibly confused on why he was asking that once again. However, within his mind, he said it rather clear. He said their names. At first, Naruto was lost. Until he read and found out what the actual name of the Hokage was. It was by accident. Because the man had looked up at the photo of the Fort Hokage and Naruto started to see the resemblance. It was always there but he just never thought that someone like him could be related to someone like that. One of his heroes. As he spoke to the Hokage about the hate that he received, the man spoke it in his mind. He himself did not know why Minato Namikaze, aka his father, seeing the beast inside of him, knowing the burden that he would face. Naruto begged him to make him understand but lies, lies over and over again, nothing but lies. The more lie he told him, the more it break and chip away at his soul, his mind. To think that someone that he trusted so much, someone that he would have literally told anything. Except for his own problems because he didn't want it to be a burden. After everything he thought the old man did for him. But in actuality, he was never truly there. He made a promise to his mother for God's sake. And all he's done to him is lie over and over again, despite how much he has suffered mentally. To everyone treating him like garbage. And yet he knew and didn't say a damn thing. It broke Naruto through and through. It chipped away at the love that he had. The only two genuine people that actually cared for him were Ayam and Tuki. They also knew but... They were forbidden from saying anything because of the Hokage's law. However, they only wanted greatness for him. They only wanted him to succeed and prove everyone wrong. Upon finding out that the old man was lying to him and about who his parents actually were, it broke a part of him. Lucy, she was there to comfort him through and through everything. And now, she made a firework out towards him. While the others were celebrating, because of the Ninetales' defeat, the lie they told everyone, and mourning his father's death, the firework was for them. But Lucy, she sent one up for him, and he knew that that was for him, for his birthday. He often thought about going to stay with her wherever she was. He's come to trust her so much, 
However, she told him that it was not time. She never truly explained but she simply told him that his purpose right now was to stay in the village. As she told him that he couldn't come where she was. As sad as that made him, he knew that she cared for him so much that she was simply probably looking out for him. Perhaps where she was was somewhere so bad that he couldn't go. He didn't know why or how but he could tell that she was being truthful. And Lucy has never lied to him. She's never lied to him before. And that is why he come to love and care for her so much. Despite never ever seen her before. As Nuta smile at the firework. Going out. Time skip. Often times he think. About revealing to the Hokage that he knew everything but. He didn't know why. Why he kept it to himself. A part of him just didn't want to say anything for reasons he didn't understand himself. Here he was seated in the classroom. Once again, a majority of the students in here were told by their parents to stay away from him, to not play with him, to not hang out with him. Because their parents knew they could not tell their children what was the real truth behind their desire of him being isolated. As he gazed down towards a pink haired girl, at first he had liked her but she didn't like him one bit, not at all. Coming to understand himself and coming to gain a bit of control over these abilities, he's learned that he can understand people in her thoughts more than anyone else because he can literally hear them. So there's no point of chasing something that would never truly happen. However, there was someone. Naruto gazed over towards him. It was Sasuke Uchiha. Sasuke and Naruto were actually friends. The term was rather loose. Given the state of their, well, perhaps it was too soon to say friendship. It happened a year ago. Flashback. Sasuke Uchiha sat by a river. Simply gazing out as Naruto was walking by. He was heading home. When he paused as he saw the Uchiha, he's never truly taken stock of him before or even focused on him. As Naruto wondered what was going through his mind, some might think that this was an invasion of one privacy but Naruto did not see it that way. He was blessed with these powers and he used them however he wanted. So he peered into Sasuke's mind and what he heard terrified him. What if I actually can't do this? Sasuke said to himself, what if I train and push myself to the very limit only to finally find him and he kills me? What was my purpose then? He's so much stronger than me. At my age he was already a ninja. He was already on the battlefield with father. He was already facing grown people. And yet here I am in the academy. Some might say that I'm a prodigy. That I'm advanced for my age but compared to what he could do at my age. It isn't shit. He shouted in his mind. What if all of this was for nothing? What if this... Pain never goes away even after I kill him. Every single day is a struggle over and over again. And I truly don't know how much more I can take. What if there is no point? What if I'm just another lamb that is going to the slaughter? After all, the only reason why he didn't kill me was because I was too pathetic. Maybe. I should do myself and him a favor and just end it all right here and now. On the outside his face was calm but on the inside his mind was a whirlwind of problem. Sasuke picked up a stone as he got to his feet as Naruto thought that he was about to throw himself in the water but while his thoughts turned toward rather dark one he wasn't going to as he pulled his arm back but Naruto crashed right into him. Tackling him down to the ground, Sasuke eyes widened as he glared up at Naruto. What the hell are you doing? Get 
off me. He pushed Naruto to the side as Naruto fell on his back. Sasuke picked himself up. What the hell is your problem? Killing yourself is not the way to go. W what? What the hell are you talking about, dope Sasuke said. As Naruto looked at him, he was certain that was his thoughts. As he realized that some people think, but they don't go through with it. I, I'm sorry, he said, brushing himself off as he got to his feet. I don't know what the hell is wrong with you, Sasuke said. But try not to tackle me like that again, or you're going to regret it. Why? Are you going to beat me up, Naruto thought. Sasuke looked at him with a determined gaze. You speak like it's not something I can do. As Naruto chuckled. You know I know about you. Sasuke Uchiha. The one they call number one in the academy. The one that is above everyone else. But I bet you that. If we were to fight right now. You wouldn't win. Sasuke looked rather shocked. That he would say that. If you know that much about me. Then you must be an idiot or something. I've seen you in the academy but I never took stock that. You were a damn fool. Well how about you give it a try said Naruto. <laughs> Fine. I do have some build up anger I want to release. Sasuke thrust forward. He was about to knock him down one punch. As he swing his right however it was a fake. To his shock though Naruto avoid his left. And pushed him in the chest. Causing Sasuke to take three steps back. Recovering from his surprise shock. Sasuke stepped forward and swing. This time he planted his foot and turned and lashed out his heel. However, Naruto backpedaled. He then ducked under Sasuke's blow as he came up and tilted his head under Sasuke's jab. He then pushed him in the chest once again, causing Sasuke to step back. Sasuke was baffled as he looked at his fists and legs. He once again attacked as he threw and punched and kicked. However, every single one of them were either evaded or blocked by Naruto. Sasuke's mind was going through a lot while he battled. He could not shut his mind down in fights. There are certain people that are capable of something like that. However, those people are far, far experienced. More than Sasuke. Every punch that he threw, every attack that he wanted to do, he speak it in his mind first. And Naruto was simply reading every aspect of his move. Sasuke finally collapsed on the ground, exhausted. Sasuke looked up as Naruto sat down nearby. How? How the hell did you do that? Sasuke asked. Naruto tapped his head. I was reading your thoughts, he said. Don't mess with me, Sasuke said, causing Naruto to chuckle. He knew no one would take him first on his words. But he did tell the truth. Sasuke just chose not to believe it. What can I say? I have a gift, said Naruto. Sasuke glared at him once again before. The glare vanished away as Naruto picked himself up. You know, I know it's a real bummer to talk about. However, you went through a rather drastic change. After what happened with the Uchiha clan, said Naruto. Causing Sasuke's eyes to snap. However, I also know something about being alone. I never knew my parents. I never really had much. I guess our situation is different. In a strange sense, but now it's the same. So if you ever want to talk to someone, you can give me a try, said Naruto. As he started to walk away. Hey, Naruto paused as he turned. As he ducked, the stone that Sasuke threw at him, the moment he turned. You really are something, Sasuke said, after chucking the stone at Naruto. And with that, he simply walked away. End of flashback. From then, the both of them had had a understanding of sorts. It's only been a couple of months after all. However, they didn't hate each other. And they talk on more than one occasion already. So yes, he wouldn't say that they were real friends, but at least it was someone else in the village that he could actually stand. 
and someone that did not see him as just a nuisance or a problem. Time skip. Time went by rather quickly. Before Naruto knew it, graduation was coming up. Unfortunately though, when the day finally came, Naruto was extremely sad. As he made his way, he failed the test. As much as he had this great ability to learn one's inner thoughts, he could never truly perform certain feats when it came to a ninja, such as a clone technique. He could never do it. Well, at least he learned something. Aruka was actually a good person. In the beginning, his thoughts were not really good, but they were not really bad. But now, it seems like he's warmed up to him. He knew that he did not deserve the hate that he was getting. Well, at least he could say that about the man. As Naruto made his way, feeling utterly useless that he failed, everyone was going to go off and be ninjas. But his dream, huh, maybe it was better if he didn't have dreams. Don't say that. Lucy's voice floated into his mind. Lucy, he said. What's wrong? Talk to me. Naruto started to tell her everything. When he was interrupted, hey Naruto, here he came. His name was Mizuki. Mizuki despised him. Yes, he was another that hated him. And his thoughts were rather dreadful. So Naruto chose to block them out. However, Mizuki came to him with a proposal. As Naruto already knew that the man was trying to use him. He was lying about this test as Naruto read his thoughts. The man was using him. The man was a traitor. Naruto was shocked to find that out. He was gonna thief the scroll away from him. An important scroll to the village. Naruto had kept in good touch with Hiruzen. Pretending like everything was okay. So the old man still trusted him. Naruto had acted like he was going to do it as Mizuki left. He made his way to inform the Hokage. Wait. Naruto blinked in confusion. You, you want me to do it? He said confused. Yes. But why? I don't understand Lucy. He's a traitor. Naruto, listen to me. Just do it. You trust me, right? Of course I do. You're the only person that I fully trust. So please, just do it, she said. I have my reasons. I promise you, nothing will happen to you. And you will not get away. Just do it. All right, he said. I'll do it. Having so good trust and faith in her, Naruto went through with it. It was easy to get the scroll. Hiros entrusted him rather too well. And the security was really lacking in that department. Well, it wasn't really simply anyone that could roam the halls. Like he could. As he took the scroll and ran away, as he headed to the forest. It wasn't the time yet though. What now? Wait, she said. Wait until he arrives. Naruto was freaking out, but he trusted Lucy. As Naruto glanced down, wondering if this possessed something that could help him with the clone technique. As he unraveled it, his eyes caught something. Shadow clone jutsu. An idea popped into Naruto's head as he wondered if he could somehow imprint the jutsu into his mind and learn it. As he tried to do it, However, what he was able to do was to see his own thoughts. Something that never happened before. No, these weren't his thoughts. They were his, his memory. Naruto was confused. That is when an idea popped into his head if he could see his memories. That meant he could simply. Naruto looked at the scroll. Remembering as much as he could. So once he was done here, he could simply. Tapped into his own memory and learned these techniques. That's awesome, he thought to himself. However, the foliage finally break. As Naruto was surprised. Aruka, what are you doing here? Naruto, what have you done? Aruka said. 
as he released a heavy breath, it's a good thing I found you first. As Naruto looked at him, wondering if he already know, why did you steal a forbidden scroll? He doesn't, Naruto thought. Mizuki told me to do it. He told me that I will be able to pass a secret test. Huh? What secret test? Upon informing him, Aruka's eyes went wide before he tackled Naruto out of the way. As a full shuriken hit the ground, Mizuki was standing on the branch. As he revealed himself as the culprit of all of this, he then proceeded to tell Naruto why the people hate him. As Naruto pretended like he did not know, even tearing up on command. He started to rush towards him as Naruto realized how truthful this actually was. While he could read someone's thoughts, Mizuki was faster than him, therefore, his attacks would come fast. Naruto stepped back as Aruka jumped in the way and started to fight Mizuki. He shouted at Naruto to run away. Naruto grabbed the scroll and ran as fast as he possibly could. Lucy! Lucy! He called out in his mind. It's alright, Naruto, she said. I won't allow anything bad to happen to you. How? Where are you? How are you going to help me? Just run, she said. I promise. I won't allow him or anyone to harm you, she said. So just run. As Naruto ran until the commotion came where he was. Naruto paused when he read, spread his senses as he found Aruka's mind. So this is how I'm going to die. Naruto turned back as he ran. Aruka, he didn't hate him. Well, I suppose it's all right. My life will be end in protecting someone. Naruto is a good kid. He's been through so much. He doesn't deserve all the hate that he receives. He's just a child. As Mizuki landed in front of Aruka, Naruto looked at his hands as he clenched his fists. He was going to have to fight. Aruka, why? Why fight for a monster like that? Mizuki started to curse at him. Aruka spat up blood. Naruto is not a monster, he said. His next following words said out loud, surprised Naruto. To how much the man seemed to actually care. Fine then. You will die along with the demon. Don't you touch him, said Naruto. As he revealed himself. Mizuki stood there as he smirked. Tuh. Well, I guess you're just gonna have to watch him die. Mizuki took the shuriken off his back and thrust it. No! Naruto ran as Aruka shouted for him to leave. He wanted to save him. He had to save him. Suddenly, he felt his body. Feeling a strange sensation coursing through him. As Naruto was right beside Aruka. Naruto tackled him down to the ground. Aruka was confused. Even Naruto was confused. The distance was vast and great. Mizuki saw it with his eyes. What the hell? He said as a shuriken slammed into the tree. Naruto noticed a kunai on the ground that fell from Aruka's pouch. He picked it up and stepped forward. No, Naruto. He'll kill you. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna fight him because I won't. Allow him to hurt you, Sensei. As Naruto was worried. Afraid. However, he pushed all of that away as he stood tall. Naruto. The voice fluttered through his mind. Lucy, I don't know if I'm going to win. It doesn't matter, she said. You're going to be just fine. You won't have to fight him. I, I can't escape with Aruka and myself. As her voice did not respond. However, something appeared in front of Mizuki. Someone. Wearing a black cloak, the person slowly turned and smiled at him as he saw their lower lips. He knew in that instant that was her and she just appeared out of nowhere. Mizuki attacked. However, she stepped to the side, dodging his face with ease. 
She then wrapped her armor on his. Before she palm strike him right in the throat. As he started to gasp for breath. I won't allow you to harm him she said. She blinked away. As she vanished. Along with Mizuki. The both of them stood there. Aruka was confused. So was Naruto. That was Lucy. But how did she? Aruka propped himself up. It seems like we're safe. Sensei, are you okay? said Naruto. It's alright. I'll be fine, he said. You on the other hand. You came back despite knowing that you might die. You were ready to fight for me, he said. Those things that you said, even after finding out what. I am, said Naruto. Aruka smiled at him. You were never a monster. You're just a child that was given a bad hand. However, you've proven that. All of that can be changed. <laughs> Naruto chuckled slightly. I guess. If the exam was tomorrow, I would have passed, huh? What do you mean, Aruka said. Naruto didn't know how, but he knew the technique now. He imprinted in his mind and his mind seemed to consume the knowledge over and over again until... Bringing his hand up. Shadow Clone Jutsu. Poof. See? I can make clones now. But I guess I already failed the exam. As Naruto dispelled the technique... Where did you... I kind of looked at the scroll, Naruto said. Looking rather cheapish. Naruto, come here, Aruka said. Naruto thought the man was going to scold him. Until, the man took off his headband. What are you... Kneel down. Naruto lowered his head. As Aruka placed the headband on his forehead. From this moment on, you are a ninja of the hidden leaf. And my comrade, he said. Leaving Naruto shocked and speechless. Time skip. The Anvus arrive on the scene. As they brought them back to get Aruka some medical help. Naruto told Hiros and everything. As he spoke about the Nine Tails. The man apologized saying that he knew but. He just didn't want him to know the burden that he had. And that there was many that knew. He just didn't want that burden on him. For revealing anything that might put his life in jeopardy. Naruto still did not trust him even because of his words. He still didn't trust him. However, he couldn't get in contact with Lucy. It was the first time he was seeing her in person. Despite not seeing her face fully, he knew that was her. But he couldn't get in contact with her. Going home that night... He was at least happy that he was actually a genin of the hidden leaf. And he was soon to be a true ninja. Time skip. Naruto was sleeping. However, his mind immediately woke him up. Naruto was shocked as he saw someone at the foot of his bed. He immediately rolled off said bed. Easy there. The voice came out soft and gentle. As he remembered... The person held their hand up and a light switch. Flick on. Standing there was. The same person that saved him from Mizuki. As she was wearing the hood once again. She reached up as she pulled it down. Allowing him to see her for the first time. She had. Blonde hair. It was duller than his. She had beautiful green eyes. She looked to be in her late teens. Around 17 or 18. As she looked at the 13 year old Naruto and smiled. It's you. Naruto responded. Despite never seeing me before. You can tell who I am she said. And it's not just for my voice. Is it? No I just. I just know. He looked at her. As he got up. Before she could say anything Naruto hugged her. Being smaller than her as she looked down towards him. He thanked her for everything that she's done for him. For always being there. As she held on to him. 
After breaking the hug, Naruto sat down. I can't stay for too long, she said. There are things that you need to know. Not just about yourself, but about everything. What do you mean, he said, confused. There was a reason I told you to allow yourself to be tricked to steal a scroll. I needed you to fully awaken. Fully awaken? What do you mean? You see, Naruto. You're a very special boy. You're not alone though. Just like me. Naruto blinked as she vanished. As she was now standing at the side of his bed. How did you... It's teleportation. And you performed that same feat tonight. I... I did? Yes. You might not have noticed, but... You broke through space to save your sensei's life. There was no true danger because I would have never allowed either of you to get hurt, but I needed to see. I knew that you were special, but I needed to see if you would be able to do this. Why, said Naruto. Because she stepped towards him. There are certain forces out there that can't know that you have these abilities. Because if they do, they will stop at nothing to hunt you down. And try to use you as a lab rat. As a test subject. And you will never be allowed to see the light of day ever again. That is why I needed you. To awaken these abilities. So I can warn you about what is to come. What do you mean? Said Naruto. She suddenly snapped her head to the right. Now? She said out loud. Fine, she said. I'm on my way. She turned back to Naruto. Whatever you do, whenever you get that tingling feeling, that sensation, like you're about to break through space itself, do not use it. Do not. Promise me you won't. Until I return. I'll explain everything once I return. Promise me. I, I promise, said Naruto. Good. Goodbye for now, she said to him. With that, she vanished, like she was never there to begin with, leaving Naruto stunned and confused as she was gone once again. He didn't understand. He didn't get much sleep that night. He was kind of worried as he didn't really understand what she meant or what was even going on. She did not return though. He had tried to contact her but he didn't hear anything. As he didn't know what was going on. Time skip. After a few days they were back at the academy. As they sat down within the class. Aruka. Was the one there as Mizuki was nowhere to be seen. Naruto had not asked Lucy what. She did to Mizuki. He had actually forgotten. Hiruzen was baffled by what he heard. As he didn't really understand. Who was the person that saved them? Aruka had blink. That was how fast Naruto had moved in. His teleportation. Aruka had blinked and not seen what Naruto had achieved at all. He had no idea what Naruto did. He just knew that Naruto was able to reach him in time. He was simply surprised by Naruto's speed. Nothing else and nothing more. Naruto was glad that he did not know. Hearing what Lucy had said, he feared whatever was going on, Aruka would be involved and get hurt because of him. So, he was glad that he wasn't aware of what was going on. So far, everything seemed to be rather calm. Naruto was placed on Team 7. At least, he could tolerate Sasuke. Over the past three years, since that first time when they met, things had been relatively good. As they had spoken on more than one occasion since then. Sasuke trying to understand how he was able to dodge him that easily. Because Naruto did not get truly involved when it came to practices. He always gave up. Not wanting to fight and yet Sasuke knew that he was able to perform far better than anyone believe or even understand. So yes he was confused about that. However, it seemed like Naruto just didn't want to show off. Kiba smirked when he saw Team 7 left behind. 
I guess the loser team is going to get the loser sensei. Their sensei was indeed late, as Team 7 was left there, while the others made their way off. Sakura was surprised when Sasuke got up and made his way towards Naruto because no one knew about their little friendship. Hey dope, he said, as he looked down towards him. If we're gonna be on the same team, no more of this nonsense, he said, about not wanting to show off. You got that, he said. You made that sound like a threat, said Naruto. And what if it is, Sasuke said. Well, I might just have to kick your ass, again, Naruto said. Sasuke sent him a light-hearted glare. That was a long time ago. Things are different now. Oh really? Well then you wanna go? Whenever you're ready, dope Sasuke said, causing Naruto to chuckle as he found it rather funny. It was a good something to take away from the confusion that he was now facing. With everything going on, Naruto had simply stopped caring about the people within the village. However, hate and despise were cruel words. He had liked Sakura, but he saw. He could tell that she would never have feelings for him. She was obsessed with Sasuke. She was really and truly in love with Uchiha. As Naruto turned his gaze towards her, she quickly looked away. She felt rather nervous. She had no idea that they were friends. Hey Sakura, said Naruto. He, yeah, she said turning towards him. I guess we're going to be on the same team, he said to her. She got out of her seat as she made her way towards them. Yeah, I, I guess so, she said. She never really talked to Naruto before. She didn't really know him at all. As he was a loner, he simply always sit by himself majority of the time. Having no idea the problems that he faced, she didn't think anything much of it. They had to wait for two hours until the door finally opened and Kakashi Hatake stepped inside. Time skip. Three weeks later, it's been two weeks since they officially became Team 7. After the couple of days off, they truly became ninjas of the village. A lot has happened since as they had to go through a test where they had to learn to trust one another. Naruto had found out about it rather quickly. As he read the copy ninja's mind, it wasn't hard at all. However, he had to get the other two to trust him. He had to say he was a bit manipulative. He used Sasuke arrogance against him, and he used Sakura love for Sasuke against her. He also found out a lot about the copy ninja. The man was worried about him. He also felt so much guilt, so much hate. His mind was filled with thoughts of the ones that he lost. Turns out that he was the student of his father. The man knew about him. Yes. However, in the earlier days, the very sight of Naruto made him sad because it reminded him of his father and the things that he's lost, his teammates. Naruto did not know what to say about him just as yet. As for Lucy, she's not been back. Not at all. As Naruto sat on his bed, wondering if she was okay. It didn't matter how much he tried. It didn't matter how hard he tried. He wasn't able to get through to her. Lucy, he thought to himself. As he closed his eyes, worrying about her. That is when he felt that tingling sensation. And instead of pushing it away, he lashed onto it, rupturing space. Naruto landed on his feet, confused and shocked. As Naruto was standing within grass, he looked around, rather confused on what was going on. Where the hell was he? The place was dark as he tried to see what was going on. However, his mind picked up on something. Something that was hurtling towards him at incredible speed. It was a spear. Naruto's eyes went wide as he held his hand up. The spear froze in mid-ear. 
Naruto was shocked. He stopped it as it was a strange blue glow that surrounded the spear. Releasing it, Naruto watched as it fell. However, someone appeared behind him with the same teleportation and hit him in the back. Naruto fell down to the ground as a person picked the spear up and twisted it in their hand. They brought it downwards, however, before they could, they were blown away by a force. Naruto looked over his shoulder as Lucy was standing there. Stand down. That's Naruto, she said. Huh? The person said, revealing to be a male. He scratched the back of his head. That's Naruto? Why the hell didn't he identify himself? He doesn't know how to do that yet. Naruto was confused. Of course he knew how to identify himself by saying his name. But the way they spoke of it, it was like there was something else he was missing. Damn kid, next time do something or even say something if you don't know how to do that one yet. Still confused by his phrasing. As the man walked away, Lucy rushed over towards him. Are you okay? She asked. Yeah, I'm fine. Whack! She whacked him over the head. Ow! Naruto said. I told you not to do it, she said. And you still disobeyed. I... I was worried about you. I was... I... I... Damn it, I, I wasn't getting through. And I was just scared for your life and I... I thought that it might help me see or hear you. I'm sorry, he said. She released her breath. As she grabbed him and they vanished. Naruto felt like he went through two stops before. Lucy dropped him right on his bed as he looked around. It's alright, she said to him. But next time, please, do as I say. And besides, you knew that I was okay. What do you mean? She knelt down as she looked into his eyes. Look at me, Naruto, she said. You knew I was okay, didn't you? Naruto felt a strange sensation. That feeling that you're feeling right now, that's me. How am I? Your powers, she said resting her hand on his cheek. They're evolving. Far faster than any of us would have ever expected. Which makes your whole life even more dangerous. Why? Talk to me, I, I don't understand. I guess I have some time. Things are difficult right now, but you need to know this. Listen to me. When I said that you were a very special boy, I meant it. We are referred to by many names. But the one that stick is the people of tomorrow. Or the tomorrow people. I never came up with any of these. They sound weird to me. But those stick. It's because of the things that we can do. And the legend that surrounds us. What legend? I'll tell you about that some other time. But right now you should know. We have the ability to enter one's mind. To read their thoughts. To see their memories. And as you can see we have the ability to teleport. We also have another. Telekinesis. They call our power the 3T. Teleport. Teleport. Telekinesis and telepath. Are you with me so far? Naruto nodded. There is not many people in the world that is capable of doing this. And some people out there despise us. They truly hate us. Because of several reasons. Jealousy. Or they're afraid. There are many reasons linking back. But there's people out there that you or your village might never even know of. There are things around this world that has been kept away from you, the village, and the populace. Believe me when I say that you haven't even seen half of it yet. But I don't want you to be in this world. Why? said Naruto. My world is dangerous. I've seen too many children like you. Dead. Because they were dragged into my world. I know that Kanoha is no picnic or the elemental nation 
as a whole but while we do live in the same world once you truly start to learn and understand your abilities things are going to change and i don't want that for you Naruto noticed that she had tears in her eyes why are you crying you're gonna hate me i know you are you're gonna despise me she said w why I, I would never hate you you're my friend yes i was but after what i'm going to do w what are you talking about i'm so sorry but i care about you too much I don't want you to die because of what I did. I thought I was just helping, but after our latest mission, I've seen it happen all over again. And children like you, you don't, you don't deserve this. This life is too much. I'm sorry. She grabbed his hands with one of hers. Lucy, wh what are you doing? Naruto said, I'm so sorry. As she pulled something from out of her pocket, it was a syringe. Please, forgive me. She slammed it down in his chest. As Naruto winced in pain, she injected the strange liquid inside of him. Naruto started to violently shake and tremble, his eyes going wide. As fraught escaped from his mouth. She pulled the needle out as he dropped to the ground. As Naruto started to recover, confused he reached as he touched his sore chest. Wha what did you do to me? As Naruto felt strange, his head, it felt empty. What did you do to me? I took away your powers. You, you what? I took your powers away. Hate me if you like. But it doesn't matter. If you hating me means that you get to live. Protected by the people here in your village. Then despise me. I'm sorry. Wait. Don't go. Please don't. She teleported away. Lucy Ruta screamed out. Time skip. Two weeks went by. Sasuke Uchiha had never really think that he would ever make friends after this point. After losing everything, his whole life was focused on one thing. However, unlike anyone else, he could actually talk with Naruto. Actually sit down and have a good conversation with him. But for the past two weeks, Naruto has been different. His eyes were so dull. And empty. Something was wrong. Sasuke knew that he should say something. Naruto was a friend, right? Having lost everything, he, he actually lost the feeling of how to cooperate with people to understand them. However, the past two weeks he could tell that something was wrong. And he wasn't the only one. Kakashi also saw it as well. As he spoke to the Hokage about this, the man had to have a conversation with Naruto, asking him if everything was alright, if he was alright. Naruto said that he was fine. However, it has been rough. Having the ability to read someone's thoughts, to know them from the inside of what they truly believe, it gave him a purpose, making him feel like he had something that no one else had, despite Lucy being there. It made him feel good with himself despite all the pain and suffering that he went through being alone, having no one, until he met Lucy. However, the one person that he thought he could always trust, she took them away from him. And for some reason, he could find himself hating her. He just could not. He didn't know why, but he couldn't hate her. However, it has been bad on him. Team 7 was given a C rank. Outside of the village. As their client was Tazuna. Their job was to help him. As they headed off. They came across two brothers. 
the Demon Brothers. It was the first time that Naruto felt genuine fear. More than even when he faced off against Mizuki. As the Demon Brother ran towards him, Naruto froze up. Luckily, the Wukakashi arrived. Sasuke chastised him for holding back once again, not to realize in that Naruto wasn't holding back. He froze up because he couldn't read the Demon Brother's mind. Not knowing what was going to happen, it scared him. He apologized and said that he wouldn't do it again. Kakashi was intrigued by hearing that. Never having any wise of this. As they decided to continue, one more thing. Gato was a problem for Tezuna. And Tezuna had been lying but Naruto did not know because he couldn't read his mind. So they decided to head off. As they came across Zabuza Momochi, a very dangerous and powerful missing name. The man captured Kakashi. As Naruto realized that, if he was going to save his comrades, he was going to have to fight. So he did fight. As they were able to free Kakashi. As the battle continue on, Kakashi coming out on top. Until the hunter didn't arrive. Once again someone that he could not read. Upon arriving there, a lot happened. First was their training of the tree walking exercise. Then there was Ineri, a young boy. His words about them not understanding his pain. It angered Naruto so much for him to shout at the child. Something that he didn't want to do. He simply left as he made his way. As he fell asleep. However, he met someone. Who are you? said Naruto. As a girl was standing there with a basket. Oh, hello there. My name is Haku, she said. I was just saying that. It's not good to sleep out here like this. You might catch a cold. I've never been sick before. Don't worry. I'll be fine. You've never been sick? Hmm. I suppose you're lucky, she said to him. Anyway, why are you out here? As Naruto looked at her, not knowing her thoughts, what she truly wanted, but she didn't seem bad. I was just blowing off some steam. She looked around. Oh, so you're a ninja then? Naruto pointed toward his headband. Yeah, he said to her. Can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. Do you have a precious person in your life? A precious person? Yeah, someone that you train and fight for. Someone that you push yourself for in training, knowing that you need to be stronger to protect them. Hearing that, Naruto felt his heart sunk. I, I thought I had. But it seems like, I don't really know. She smiled at him. I think you do. However... I believe that if you have a precious person, you would be stronger than you can ever imagine. What do you mean, said Naruto? When you have someone to protect, that is when you truly become strong. She said, as she started to walk away. Oh, by the way, I'm a boy. Naruto was surprised by that. A boy possessing those features. Time skip. Naruto drop kick. Both of the thugs that were hired to capture Inyeri and Tsunami as he landed. Inyeri was shocked. You said that heroes didn't exist. Well, I know a thing or two about that. What you just did running into saving your mom's life. Despite not knowing if you would live or die. That is the definition of what a hero is. Naruto said. As he picked Tsunami up who had been knocked unconscious and brought her inside. Stay with your mom, it seems. Things are finally coming to an end, said Naruto. Wait, Inira said. As Naruto looked at him, the boy had a new confidence and new vigor about him. You can do it, he said. I plan on it, said Naruto as he made his way off. He had cleansed his mind about the thoughts. Of losing his powers. Since that talk with Haku. 
He needed to focus on protecting his comrades and fighting for this mission. He couldn't let these people down. Upon arriving towards the bridge, without thinking Ruta jumped right in the ice dome after seeing Sasuke get hit. You idiot, Sasuke said. You should have stayed outside and fight out there. Your eyes, said Naruto. I know, Sasuke said, but this is no time to celebrate. As he looked at the hunter and in, whoever that is, they're fast. I can't beat them on my own, Sasuke said. Sasuke was surprised at himself for saying that. Well, you're not alone anymore, said Naruto, because I am here. They started to fight together, however. They were not strong enough or fast enough. To destroy or outpace the needles. As Sasuke was slowing down and so was Naruto. It's over. The hunter Nin snuck up on Naruto. However, Sasuke was bombarded. He fell. W w why? Naruto said with tears. Why would you do that? He shouted at him. Sasuke took the attack. I... I don't know. My body just... moved on its own. Naruto looked at him. No, you... you can't die. There's a lot for you to do. I guess... I won't be able to do it. I always thought there was an opportunity that I would never... get to finish what I started. Naruto, you're my friend. You're my only friend, he said. As Sasuke proceeded to die right in Naruto's arms. Is this the first time you're watching a comrade die? Naruto fist clench. Shut your mouth, he said. Anger. Rage. Coursing through him. Meanwhile. Within the depths of the boy's subconscious, two red eyes open up. However, the massive nine-tailed beast saw something. The water started to swirl. The water started to move erratically. It then started to rise and rise and rise before it exploded outwards. A strange blue light generated from the pit of the bottom of the water that was there. It started to fluctuate out slightly until it started to break and break and break like something was banging. Boom, the light erupted outwards. And that blue energy exploded outwards, shocking the beasts. Meanwhile, on the outside, Naruto released a violent scream. The scream was normal. A psychic blast was sent out. Everything around him exploded. All the mirrors exploded outwards. Haku was thrown violently. As a blue aura surrounded Naruto from head to toe. As he screamed, time came to an utter stop and everything froze. A distance away. Lucy was face to face with someone. She had a wooden sword in her hand when suddenly she and the person both stopped. As they looked up, the birds in the sky freeze. The animals on the ground froze. Lucy gripped her head, so did the other person. As a blood curdling scream split through their mind. Ruto? Lucy said. But guys, it'll be in sub so right here. If you want to see next parts and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification as they posted. But I'm off now. See you guys soon. Peace.